Welcome back to AMD Tuition for Physics Paper 2 Predictions. We have gone through all of the previous past papers that have been written and come up with some of the specific topics that you should focus in on. And make sure you stay until the end because I'll reveal some of the specific styles of questions to be aware of and prepare for that your teachers may have neglected a bit in school. The first thing that I want to talk about is waves. Make sure that you know all the general properties of each kind of wave in the electromagnetic wave spectrum and be able to compare the properties of each wave with one another. In particularly, make sure that you know UV light and radio waves very well, and also other key concepts such as the Big Bang Theory, supernovas, and in particularly with supernovas, make sure that you know their distances from the Earth and also their life cycle. And also important to know how an electromagnet works. And here are some notes on electromagnets for you to screenshot. And just before we continue, if you are benefiting from our videos in just the slightest, could you do me a massive favor and hit the like and subscribe button to let me know if you're finding these videos useful. And the videos aren't stopping after your exams finish because I'm going to be telling you what to expect and what to be doing straight after your GCSEs, so stay tuned for all of that. Okay, so back onto this paper, make sure that you're familiar with all the calculations and all the equations and practice having a go on how to work things out because physics especially is very, very math heavy and there's going to be a lot of calculations involved. So if you are able to get all of these right, you're already going to be on a very good mark and then everything else you can use as a bonus. One tip advice what I did for my GCSE physics paper to get really top marks is I went through the paper and didn't necessarily do it in a certain order, but I knew I was very good at the calculations and I thought they were quite straightforward. So what I did is I went through all of the calculations straight away, completed them very quickly, and then I had so much more time to complete all of the harder questions, which included a bit more content. So it was a less stressful experience for me and overall got a better grade because of it so if you're someone who um, is very good at the calculations and think you can do them very well maybe that's a technique you can adopt as well make sure that you're also very familiar with scalar and vector and especially what is the difference between them so someone let me know in the comments what is the difference between scalar and vector before I go over some other specific exam techniques for you, some other topics to focus in on are the motor and generator effects. These are very important, so make sure you understand these and are able to explain this if needed to. That's the best way you're going to give yourself a good chance of answering these sort of questions about them. And also how to apply them is very important. And I don't want to give you too many topics to focus in on because I know it's only the day before the exam, but alternators and dynamos. Make sure that you know these because if these come up, you're going to want to get those marks. And I know everyone's always asking about practicals. Are they going to come up? Are they not going to come up? The truth is they're very unpredictable and especially for six mark questions, they could be a direct six mark question for you to explain how something works, but the six mark question could be something on the theory. So what I would say is focus in on making sure you know the theory very well. That'll make it easier for you to understand the practical and make sure you have a general understanding about the practical and how you'd make certain calculations around it. In terms of more specific kind of scientific questions they can ask you, I'm sure you're all good at this anyway with that you've had a lot of practice, but make sure that you're able to interpret graphs and tables and knowing how to describe any patterns or trends that you see. Also know how to plot one of those graphs and do a best line of fit. Um, make sure that you know the difference between a dependent, independent and control variable. This is very important if you're going to understand to be able to answer some of these questions and also Practice stating what each of these are in your required practicals if you're looking to practice in on the required practicals and you have a bit, bit more time. So yeah, what I'd be doing is just add to your notes what is a control variable, independent variable, and dependent variable for each practical. And that way you're kind of practicing understanding the practical and you're implementing um, a certain scientific method as well in there. Now, it's the day before the GCSE exam for physics, and I want you to treat the comment section as a community for you all to discuss the exam, how you're feeling, what you think is going to come up, and any other thoughts you want to discuss. And I'll be in the comment section as well, so make sure you drop a comment in there. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you all again soon.